So a couple of weeks ago, I talked about a life-changing tool for visual effects artists using AI, specifically Stable Diffusion 2, to generate amazing images. I talked about using After Effects to manipulate those images, super game-changing stuff. I've still been using Stable Diffusion to generate my thumbnails since then. It's been really fun. Well, today I'm going to talk about a Stable Diffusion plugin for Blender. Now, this is super exciting. Like my first video, this is 100% free. Blender is 100% free, zero dollars out of your pocket to access this powerful tool. But unlike the first method, you have the power to change your composition using that 3D software. So you can change your lighting, you can change where things are placed in the scene, you can drop in simple objects and generate amazing AI scenes. So let's hop in and I'll show you how to install this and we'll talk about some of the possibilities of what you can create with this plugin. By the way, if you're looking for any plugins, presets, extensions to save you time and create cool effects, my digital asset store is at the top of the description. So for Blender, the plugin is called Stable Diffusion in Blender. Very simple, the link will be in the description and that is by AI Render. All you need to do once you download that zip file in Blender, go up to Edit, Preferences, and then in this Add-ons tab here, just go ahead and click Install and then navigate to wherever you save that zip file on your computer. So just click here, click Install Add-on, I already have. Once you have, you'll see this little checkbox here. Make sure you check that on. And then one extra step, you just need to expand this here and you're gonna see it needs an API key. So go ahead and just click sign up for Dream Studio free. It'll open up a link and then you guys can just sign in with your Google account or create an account here for free. And you'll have a little API key here, which you can just click and copy and then paste that back into Blender. So once you have done that, it's super easy to do this. Let's go ahead and just test it out on the default cube to actually navigate to the AI render window. It's going to be in your render settings here. We're going to scroll down. You're going to see this new AI render tab. So we can click enable AI render and it's going to say set up here. It wants you to set the size to 512 by 512. AI is still in an evolving stage, so don't expect crazy HD things lightning fast for a while. So we'll just click that to set it. And then they have these awesome preset styles here. So you can click and select different preset styles that they're showing you. Amazing. So let's select bone carving here. And now you'll see we have a prompt box where we can write anything. So I'll just type a box made out of bone. So this will be our basic example here. If we go to advanced options, you can change around the item similarity. And if you hover over, it's going to tell you exactly what you want here. So how closely the final image will match the initial rendered image. You have your steps, higher values take longer, but they'll generate more crazy results. And you have your prompt strength, how closely the text prompt will be followed. So you guys can play around with that. They have different samplers, which is basically going to change around the filtering of the final output. I'll leave that default for now. Now to actually do this, we just need to render our image just like you normally would in Blender. So we'll go up to render and we'll render image. Give it a few seconds and you guys will see the processed version of this. And not too much changed. You can see there is some bone texture going on. Let's go in here and just change one word in the prompt. Let's just say a skull. Skull made of bone. And then render it again. And there you go. Pretty cool, pretty crazy. It's working off the data from your original image here. So keep that in mind. Let's go to file and we'll just import in here a simple object. We'll import in a castle structure. This is from my 3D model starter pack. I'll just click shift D and we'll just give it like a basic little building shape, something like that. Extremely simple. We'll position our camera where we want it. And then in our AI here, we can go to cyberpunk city dystopian you guys can look up stable diffusion prompts sometimes these can help you get the right keywords that you're looking for for a certain look a certain style and you have things like octane render trending on art station movie concept art you guys can copy and paste this into your prompts we'll select this artsy cyberpunk painting preset and we'll check it out just from our beginning here which literally took us seconds to make you guys can create some really cool renders some really cool concept art and images what i love about this is you have control over the lighting you have control over the composition as opposed to the first stable diffusion method where i think that one is better for fully crafting your image taking the time to change the settings using image to image and fully crafting the output you want this is great for fully designing the scene you want. So two sides of the coin, but still the same tool set. I love this a lot. If you guys want things closer to your composition, uh, maybe you don't want something as like stylistic. If you want something closer to this, you guys just have to go back to your settings here, change your image similarity. So if we put that up to like 0 0.5, 
it's going to be more similar to the original setup here. So it's going to be more similar to this. So now we have those buildings, but they just kind of have some cyberpunk design. So great. And inversely, again, if you want it to be out there, you can lower that. So we'll put it to 0 0.1 and it'll really dream away something crazier like that. Pretty cool. All right, so now you know the basics, I'm really gonna blow your mind with what you can do with this plugin. I'm gonna whip up a fast 3D character using FaceGen and Daz. FaceGen is optional. You can learn about it in my four ways to make a 3D character video, but Daz is completely free. They also have a built-in Daz to Blender bridge. So I'll slap some clothing assets onto this 3D character and we'll go ahead and transfer it over to Blender. In Blender, I'm gonna add a quick beard and some hair using the particle system to create this scuffed Drake character so, so our AI at least has some data to know to place a beard and hair there. Then let's go to our AI prompt and I'll write in Drake, Pixar, 3D, and some other prompts to stylize it. Fire up the render and bam, we turn this ugly mess I made in minutes into this stylized cartoon. The beauty of being able to do this in Blender is we can rotate this character, we can add things in the back, we can change colors or materials. Let's recreate the Nothing Was The Same album cover by rotating Drake and loading in a cloudy sky HDRI to our environment texture. And check it out. Like I said guys, AI is the future. The possibilities for what you guys can create with this are endless. So super cool tool. In the future, they are working on creating animation support, upscaling, batch rendering, all that great stuff. So definitely something to keep an eye on. And I think it's definitely a useful tool for those of you who are in Blender a lot. And that's about it guys. Quick little explainer video. I've been loving these AI tools. I think that there's so much possibility to use these to help us create amazing things. They help boost our creativity, but ultimately we're the architect of building what we wanna build and I think Implementing this into something like Blender is super game-changing. So if you guys enjoyed, slap a like on the video. It means a huge amount. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you guys in the next one.